Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and if you're looking to create the next big indie breakout hit, you're probably thinking to yourself you need to use one of the big three game engines, at least big three in terms of the number of games made with them, and those are in order of, uh, let's say, games made size. Uh, the first one is no doubt the Unity game engine. Now this one has taken a bit of a hit in the recent year, but at the same time, this is the most popular and successful game engine out there, especially in the indie space. There are literally tens of thousands of games on Steam that were made using the Unity game engine. Now next up you could probably think of would be the Unreal game engine. Now Unreal is the uh, AAA game engine out there. You can get it completely for free and if you make less than a million dollars you don't have to pay anything which is definitely appealing in that regard uh, but it's also uh, complex. Uh, so it's been used to make games such as Fortnite. Uh, the earlier versions made the Mortal Kombat series. A number of AAA titles out there but also a number of uh, larger indie games were made using the Unreal engine. And if you're more of an open source kind of person, well, that is where the Godot game engine comes in. Uh, the current rising darling in the uh, space, probably the least number of games made, well, definitely the least number of make games made in those three, but probably the most number of new projects started using it uh, as far as 2023 goes. So uh, Godot is definitely on the rise. But if I was just starting out, I probably wouldn't recommend any of these, to be honest. Not that there's anything wrong with any of these engines. It's just that there's simpler choices out there. And on top of that, quite frankly, did you know that last year's Breakout Indie hit and this year's Breakout Indie hit were both made with relatively obscure game engines? So the first one we're going to talk about today is Vampire Survivor. Now, I'm not going to lie, Vampire Survivor is not the greatest thing to look at. It's not the prettiest game ever made, but what it is is absolutely and utterly addictive. And basically, it created its own brand new genre of games. It's kind of one of those proofs that it's not the engine and the indie level that you're working with. It's the the game concept. If, is your game fun? Also, don't forget, there's also a good part of luck. Did it get exposure? Did the right people find it? Did more people get it? You know, you don't become a smash hit without a little bit of luck involved as well. But what this illustrates is it's not necessarily the game engine you pick. You could create these massive hits uh, at the indie level using pretty much whatever game engine you wish. Now, if you're wondering about Vampire Survivor, well, it was created using a framework called Phaser. Now, I've been a big fan of Phaser for a very long time. This is an HTML5 framework, so it's more mostly thought of more in terms of making web games, uh, but at the same time, as you saw from Vampire Survivor, it can make just about any kind of game. So uh, that was last year's big breakout indie hit was something called Vampire Survivor. Now this year's is the topic of today's video, and that is Bellatro. Now this is also an amazingly addictive game. Uh, it basically, they mixed poker and deck building and roguelites. Uh, it's, again, it, it's hard to kind of explain it to somebody in terms of what the game is. All I can tell you is it is very addictive, and in terms of 2024 sales, this thing is just topping the charts in terms of indie space. I think it's like currently top 20 of all sales. That includes like AAA space, etc. on Steam right now. Um, the, the developer has made several millions of dollars anyways, and it has only been out for a couple of months. And Bellatro is made using another kind of, um, I'm not gonna say obscure framework, but not one that you may think of when you're starting out. In fact, this is the one I actually recommended for people that when they were beginning, and it's a framework called Love, and it uses a programming language called Lua. So if you're looking for uh, a code based, so you're not looking for a lot of tools. So if you're looking for a lot of tools, you're gonna probably want to use something like Game Maker or um, Godot or Construct or something to that effect. G Develop maybe. There are a number of game engines out there if you need to have like level designers and that kind of stuff, but if if you're looking for like a code based beginner friendly framework and game engine out there, Love is definitely worth checking out. I'm going to show you something really kind of neat here. Going back to uh, Bellatro itself, uh, if you've got this, this isn't an open source project, but you can actually access the entirety of the source code to see how a hugely successful game created using the Love framework works. And let me go ahead and show you how to do that now. First things first, I'm going to assume that you actually own the game. So if you have a copy of it on Steam, locate it like I have here and go to right click, manage, browse local files. And then what you're going to find here is you've got the Bellatro EXE and then a number of DLL files. Basically grab the, the EXE and paste it somewhere. We'll go with my desktop in this particular point in time. And now what you could do if you've got 7-zip integrated or some zip program integrated, you can literally right click, go to 7-zip, and extract it out. If you do not have a program like that integrated, no problem. Just rename it from .exe to .zip, and then you can get the entire contents available. So what you're gonna see here, if you open this guy up, you're going to have all of the resources that were used. So the fonts, the shaders, the sounds, the textures, they're all here. 
Uh, everything used to make this game is here, as is all of the code. So what I'm gonna do is right click this guy and open it up with Visual Studio Code. And then what you're going to see here is the entirety is there. So the common approach to games is to have an entry point called main. And this is no exception. So main.lua is where this program actually starts. And you can see the code. It's not obfuscated. It's not split up. It's not um, hard to read. It's literally all here. So if you want to see exactly how this game was made and you own it, you can actually jump in and take a look at the entire code project. Uh, and it's actually a really neat opportunity. It also shows you exactly how uh, Lua and Love work, what it's like working with them. And the code, uh, I like Lua. There's certain things that they've done with the language design that I find frustrating. But for the most part, as a beginner programming language, Lua is an exceptionally good choice. And then you can see here, it handles it. Um, the Love framework uses a series of callbacks at different points in time uh, in your programs running. So one is dot run. So that's when your program actually began running and then you've got load draw and so on so here you can see in dot run they go ahead and set up your code so all your logic is here and then here is the callback for when load is called and then quit update draw key pressed key released and so on so that is how you handle things inside of a love game basically you just handle these callbacks that respond to the various different events that happen in the world and then you're going to notice these things all break down so you can see here the games engine itself is over here so particle systems for example here's how particles are handled inside of it sprite handling is here uh and all of the everything is here uh, various different uh, functions for handling there. Uh, the, the localization for all the various different environments. So example, France. This is the translation to French, Italian, and so on. Everything you ever wondered about how a game is put together, you can find out in Bellatro. It is all there. Now, again, I have to remind you, this is not an open source project. You still need to own it 100%. But this does give you the ability to actually go ahead and take a look at how a game, like again, a smash hit game at this point in time was put together. But if anything, what this should teach you is don't worry too, too much about what game engine you're starting out with. Even if you're trying to create a hugely successful indie game, they um, they can be made with just about any game engine or framework out there. As we saw from here, Vampire Survivor made using Phaser, and now Bellatro made using Love. By the way, if I've piqued your interest with Lua and Love and you want to learn a little bit more, well, first off, you can check it out at love2d.org. Uh, that is the website for Love. And then I did actually a tutorial series on this guy quite a while ago, uh, 2016. The cool thing about these kind of frameworks, things like, um, again, uh, Love Lua uh, or um, Cocos 2D or LibGDX, etc. These code-based frameworks, uh, SDL, SFML, and so on, they don't change that much over time. So even older tutorials are still super relevant. And what you're going to find here is I've broken this up into a couple of different pieces. These are your optional stuff, things like setting up an IDE, and then some overview about uh, you know what love is, ha ha ha, uh, and how to configure it. Then I did a series of Lua tutorials so that'll teach you the programming language so you can learn everything you need to know to get started with Lua. And then I did another series of love tutorials showing here, starting with love, configuring love, drawing graphics, using sprites and images, handling keyboard, handling the mouse, handling audio, physics, modules, and objects. And from there, you can basically make any kind of 2D game you wish. Now, I'm not saying that you should choose these game engines. I'm not saying you should not either. Uh, but what I'm saying is what game engine you decide to start out with, it doesn't have to be uh, Unreal, Unity, or Godot. And as you can see from these guys, uh, it's the game that matters more so than the engine that you chose. So don't let engine paralysis be a thing. If you want to start creating a game and the tool you're working with right now is comfortable to you, just go with it. And if you need to move it to a different tool down the road, you move it to the tool down the road and you've had a great learning experience. But yeah, this year's breakout hit created using the Love Framework, that would be uh, Bellatro. And again, showed you that tip that you could go ahead and check out inside of it. Again, uh, we're talking 15,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews there. The other one created using the phaser framework is last year's Vampire Survivor. And here you're talking 215,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews also. So let's just say the developers of both these projects are quite wealthy at this point in time and have hugely successful games. Uh, and they both use game engines you probably don't think of when you're thinking about which game engine should I choose. So that's why this channel exists. I've literally covered hundreds of game engines out there. Some of them are more toy projects, but if you're looking at an indie scope project, uh, yeah, use what you want. So let me know what you think. Uh, did you check out Bellatro? Are you going to look at the source code for it uh, later on? Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.